Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad and this session I'm going to be looking at the U.S. transfer pricing rules and specifically the role that the IRS and the U.S. Treasury plays in enforcement. This topic is covered in international accounting or taxation course. As always, I would like to remind me, remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance and tax lecture. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including CPA questions. On my website, I do have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, notes, true false, multiple choice, quasi CPA simulations, and 2000 plus CPA questions. I strongly su suggest you visit my website. Also, if you don't understand what transfer pricing is, check in the uh, link in the description if you'd like to get a review of what is transfer pricing. In the US, the Internal Revenue Service has the authority, this is the authority to audit international transfer prices and adjust a company's tax liability if the price deemed to be inappropriate. What does that mean? It means the IRS code section 482 gives the IRS agents the ability to question you to adjust your transfer prices. If they think you are setting up transfer prices for the sole purpose of reducing your tax liability, they can adjust it. They can assume a different price and based on that different price, they can recompute your tax liability and make you pay more taxes. So the IRS may adjust, may audit and adjust the transfer prices between companies controlled directly or indirectly by the same taxpayer. Obviously, you, they, the, the uh, transfer prices uh, is between related related parties and section 482 of the code applies to both upstream and downstream transfer between a parent and a foreign subsidiary between a foreign subsidy for, between a foreign parent and its u.s subsidiary and between a u.s subsidiary and its foreign subsidiary of the of the same parent so it applies to all type of interrelated transaction whether it's upstream or downstream and obviously the irs concern is are you paying enough taxes that's the whole purpose of the irs now the irs follows a similar guide guidelines to to OECD which is what which is the arm length prices what is the arm length prices it's the prices with which would have been agreed upon between unrelated parties engaged in the same or similar transaction under the same or similar circumstances in the open market you know arm, arm length means let's assume you are selling to somebody outside to your party it's not your affiliate it's not your parent company it's not a subsidiary of yours it's not a sister company what price would you charge them? And that's the price that you should charge. Okay. Now, because some same or similar transaction with unrelated parties do not exist, determining an arm length price generally involves reference to comparable transaction under comparable circumstances. Now, oftentimes there is no market. In, in other words, your transaction is so unique that there is nothing to compare it to. Then you would look at comparable circumstances, comparable uh, transactions, the closest to reality. Okay. Now, also the U.S. Treasury have their own regulation that supplement, that supplement Section 482 of the IRS Code in establishing more specific guidelines. They have more specific guidelines on determining what's an arm length transaction. U.S. regulation says there's something called the best method rule require the taxpayer to use to transfer pricing method that under the fact and circumstances provide the most reliable measure at an arm length transaction. So basically, the best method rule says use your best effort, best fact, best circumstances in determining that price. Now, in determining which method provide, you know, uh, the most reliable measure, you have to take into account two consideration. Comparability, the degree of comparability between the intercompany transaction and any comparable uncontrolled transaction. So you have to look at your transaction within the same entity and some comparable in control means with a, with a third party transaction and the quality of the data and assumptions used in the analysis so when you determine your price you know what type of data are you looking at what type of assumptions are you making in determining the price of the transaction now also determining the degree of comparability and the quality of the data um, and whether you have an intercompany transaction or an uncontrolled transaction, you can look at five factors in determining that price. So what are the five factors? I'm going to look at the five factors. Now, bear in mind, these factors and you know require substantial judgment, and each situation is different. I just want to give you a taste of them. So the first factor you would look at is the functions performed by the various parties in the two transactions. So what is your role here? It all depends whether you are 
research and development, what you are, what, whether you are doing the process, product design or engineering, maybe you're only the purchasing agent here, or maybe you are doing transportation and warehousing. So what functions, you would look at what functions, that's one of the factors. The second factors is the contractual terms that could affect the result of the transaction. Well, what type of contract between the two parties are involved here? Not all contracts are the same. For example, is there any rights to update provisions and modification? If that's the case, you might have to charge a higher price. Maybe if there is sales or purchase volume, you may want to reduce the price. So depending on the on the contractual terms. In other words, there are many factors that goes into the pricing, not, not comparing apples to apples. You have to look at other things. Extension of credit and payment terms. What type of credit terms and uh, credit terms and payment terms are you offering in this transaction? So the contractual terms is another factor that take into you take into account. The third factor is the risk that affect the prices that would be charged or paid or the profit that would be earned in the transaction. So what type of risk is involved? Because different transactions, if they are located in different places, they, they are involved with different risks. For example, what is the market risk? What is risk, the risk associated with success or failure of R&D activities if you're involved in R&D? What is the credit and collection risk if you're selling on credit? Well, if there is a risk, you're not going to collect your money. You may, cha you may charge higher prices. Product liability risk. If you're selling a product and there's a product liability risk, again, you have to hedge. You have to factor higher price because you're taking more risk. So simply put, the risk of the transaction plays a role in determining the price. Four, economic conditions that affect the price or profit earned in the, in the, in the two transaction. And economic condition could be, is it in the same geographical area? Because if you're selling in a high inflationary area, it's different if you're selling something in um, South America in Venezuela, it's, it's a different risk as if you're selling it in Brazil because it's a different geographical market. The relative size of each market, you know, are you trying to uh, attain more market share or are you trying to penetrate the market? That matters. That matters how you determine your price. The location, specific cost of the factor production and distribution. Where's your factors of production and distribution? Are they located in that, in that country? Do you have to bring them from the outside? That also matters. Okay, and the alter the alternatives realistically available to the buyer and the seller. So if you don't, if I don't sell this product or somebody does, does not buy it from me, what what's the what's my alternative? What's their alternative? If they have many alternative, it means I should not be raising my price a lot. But if I have a quasi monopoly and the buyer and the seller don't have many options, the price might be higher. So in other words, many factors goes into determining that price. And five is the property or service transfer in the transaction, the type of the property. You know, sometimes it's an intangible that, are, that that is embedded in a tangible property or service being transferred. So there are many, many factors, and those are the five big ones. Once again, in the real world, each transaction is unique. Each transaction is unique. Unique, it, it, there is no more unique word than unique. Therefore, determining the price is tricky. And what companies have to do when they determine the transfer price, they have to document. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is the most important thing in transfer pricing. How did you come up? And this is a guidelines. Well, uh, this is the guidelines of where you could look at uh, to, to establish your documentation. Okay. So Treasury Department, uh, the Treasury regulation established guidelines for determining an arm length price for various, guys, for, for various kinds of intercompany transaction. Here we're talking about sales of tangible property, license of intangible property, intercompany loans, intercompany services. But the most common type of international transaction is the sale of tangible property when you sell tangible property. And that's, that's getting to be less and less important because, you know, intangibles are getting more, you know, uh, they're taking a larger role in, in the economic life of different companies. So in the next session, we'll look at the sale of tangible property, specifically the rules that follow this. Once again, I would like to remind you that I have many other courses on my channel that cover various accounting, finance, and auditing lectures. And on my website, you have, you have access to additional resources. I strongly suggest you, and you subscribe. It's an investment in your career. Study hard and good luck.